It's, uh, I'm up at Grandma's again, my mother-in-law's. It's been a week since I did that toilet paper thing. I want to talk about 35, 45 rather, 4578 35th Street where we lived from 1942 to about 1954. Now, we became ashamed of our house, but I, that house, a few, you know, back in the 60s, we started building, you know, and then 70s, getting into construction, building homes. Boy, I would have loved to have that house. And you take that house just as that sat, stick it anywhere in town, and beautiful. It was all wood, you know, redwood or cedar, you know, the wood shingles. Uh, the porch went from one side of the house to the other with the four pillars holding it up, painted white. And the porch was about eight feet deep. And the house sat about three feet off the ground. You could uh, stairs in the middle and went about 30 or 40 feet and then dropped down to the street. Everybody's houses was a, was up high. Everybody's houses so the streets could actually flood and the water would never come up to your house. And uh, in the front of the house, I think I, the sides kind of mine, I don't remember, it might have been like like the shake shingle roofs, but not shake shingle, they were flat shingles. They weren't the rough kind. And uh, the sides might have kind of been shingled, I'm not sure, big shingles, you know. One, and then you know, work your way up so the water would drift. But I, I'm thinking the front was like one by 12s, actual one by 12s, standing up with a little board covering where they met at the cracks. And the inside was all wood, wood ceiling, and wood walls, and smooth, wood floor. Over to the right, as you go through the front door, was a little little uh, kerosene stove that went up, and you could see in the kind of the pantry area, you could see the actual ice box where the ice man would come around and come up to the house with that big block, and you know, the leather thing, and a big block of ice, and, and uh, but then all of the, the house must have been built way, 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 way before all the other houses. Because, because like back in Arkansas, when we moved from, you know, I was young yet, I don't remember, but when we would move, we moved from where I was born in uh, the lumber camp, Forrester, Arkansas, and we had, uh, you know, the trees are gone, the mill, everybody's jobs are gone, and, our family had to move on and we came across a little wood place i think back in the 70s i visited that place and uh, it was just a little square you know 30 feet by 30 feet you know one half was had a floor and the other half was dirt and so we just you know pulled over and put our stuff in there and lived in there and the owner would come down and a few days later or whatever hi how you doing nothing was ever said you know back in those days in arkansas and somebody left they just left and you come across a vacant house and you either find the property owner you know a mile or five or six football fields away anyway and say can I stay there sure sure or just live there and then they come down and visit but anyway when my dad saw this place you know because he made pretty good money you know he's making as much money as anybody else that's renting around him so he could have probably but I mean to that you know, in his eyes, like, oh man, I like that. But as we grew older, it, uh, it was like an eyesore because it didn't fit. All the other houses as they started building were built with the same kind of materials. You know, little uh, shiplap type wood and uh, everybody had little porches of some kind. And it wasn't until about the 50s that they started coming in with, with uh, chicken wire and black paper and plaster on the outsides with... Uh, two-story apartments here and there and there were vacant lots everywhere every you know just everybody coveted the corner houses they were all full but there was vacant lots everywhere you know there wasn't you couldn't go down any street without finding a, a vacant lot and um, all the blocks had alleys and they were like a T like you go from Madison and then in Monroe, you'd have a row of houses facing the street, and then their backyards would be an alley, so it would be a T. And so all of the alleys had, all the blocks had alleys. But uh, like I say, we 
we became ashamed of our house because it, it didn't it didn't fit with what was around us. It was like an eyesore it stood out. But boy, I'd love to have that house now. Just stick it anywhere. It'd be a beautiful house.